You don't remember the name? I said it when we made the salad video. Buddhist candy. Talk to him. Uh, <laughs> What's up, everybody? We are here for our third episode. Third episode. Of Buddhist candy, our mm. cooking series. Why Buddhist candy? Brick City Buddha. Mm-hmm. Candy, Candice, you know, sweet or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this series is our invitation to take people on a journey of healing mm -hmm. that doesn't just require the emotional aspect. You'll always have to tap into multiple layers of healing. And food is a huge part of that that ultimately affects the emotions. But this is an easier place for people to start. No doubt. Hopefully they don't get at me because I just kissed the back of your neck and I got to use my lips to eat. <laughs> so we're we going to talk about it. We got a lot to talk about Listen, today. The only people eating the food is me and you. So you And know. really just me, but we'll yeah, we, we, we talk about it. We got a lot to discuss today. Right. Um, we're going to do a special run on this particular one. I'm doing an episode and then Candice will also be doing an episode. She's going to show you how to make one of her specialties that will give you the story about how that came to be one of her favorite meals. We know it's Thanksgiving, so we wanted to give y'all options. I don't know if you're going to be able to bring all this to the Thanksgiving table, but we want to double up being that everybody is heavy on food right now. All right, so um, once again, shout out to everybody that's been supporting. Salad video is still going crazy. We cracked that half a ticket. Um, I think we had like 500 and almost 20,000 on that video. We approaching 30,000 on the pasta video. Y'all been making the food. Y'all been tagging us. So please keep that going. And without further ado, we're not going to waste your time. So today I'm going to make another one of my go-to meals. Um, this is like a treat for me. I don't make it often, but when I'm in the mood for something a little heftier, this is what I go with, but it's still super clean, still gluten-free, still got your phytonutrients and things of that nature. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So we have asparagus, we have purple potatoes, we have Asian jewel potatoes, and we have, remember we was talking about the portobello mushrooms and how we veered more towards the high-end mushrooms at this point. Price point is a little bit higher, but it's worth it in the long run because it ain't nothing more expensive than the doctor bill at this point. Um, so it's a sacrifice that works out for you. Mostly, uh, these will run you about $9.99 at Whole Foods, depending on where you live at, right? And it says right there, blue oyster mushrooms. Okay, so this is gonna be our meat. We're gonna make blue oyster mushroom steaks. My wife actually specializes in lion's mane. She will show y'all how to do that at a later date, but I'm gonna do the lion's mane today. I'm gonna also make a purple slash Asian potato melee, like a mashed potato. Y'all could bring that to your Thanksgiving table. You could make it a vegan dish. And then the asparagus, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna heat things up, okay? And uh, like I said, I know I know people got different eating habits. Oh yeah, we also got black garlic today. I was supposed to show y'all that in the pasta video. For some reason, I forgot to get to it. We couldn't find it. So we actually do have the black garlic. I wanna show you the brand that I use, but it's of course many brands out here. This is what was available to me, All right? And the difference with black garlic is the nutrients, uh, less acidity. I'm gonna read something to y'all in a second. And this is kind of what it looks like. Now, it's not the same flavor profile. It definitely has some savory, savoriness to it, um, but it has more of a, a sweet component. It's often used in Japanese and Asian dishes, but of course you can substitute it instead of the white garlic. And it's a little softer. Um, it's not as firm, it's not as stiff. And with people who didn't understand like why we use it, not using the garlic, if you were to just leave garlic on your skin, you would have an abrasion, right? When you eat garlic, the, the heat of it, um, it comes out of your pores. These are indications that the body has some difficulty breaking down that level of acidity, right? So with black garlic, I just wanted to read y'all some of the benefits. And it's beautiful because this space is becoming an educational platform for me as well. I'm learning a lot from you guys. Um, so we want to keep the education going. So with black garlic, uh, contains more sulfur compounds than white garlic. These sulfur compounds are responsible for many of the health benefits of garlic. They have antioxidant properties. They help boost the immune system, improve cardiovascular health, 
and have anti-inflammatory properties that white garlic does not have. So that's why I have veered towards that. So we're going to get started by getting our mushroom, excuse me, our potato melly together. I'm going to cut these down a little bit while my stuff is heating up. Now, I know I talked to y'all about not using oil. And of course, that's usually the case for me. But today with steak, it's very difficult to cook these without some level of oil. So I am using oil right now. I always stain my cast iron with oil anyway. And I put a little bit extra in there. So we're just going to kind of cube these. And look how beautiful this is, y'all. Look at that. Right? Oftentimes, people talk about when things are void of color. Um, in the food world, a lot of times it's an indication it may not have as much nutrients. Let me come closer to the camera. So we're just going to go down the line. And I'm going to just kind of cube these up. Now, I made a mistake. This should have been a purple potato. It can fool you. So sometimes you just got to be a little sneaky and just scrape and make sure you got the right one. This should have been purple just like that is. But this is the Asian potato. So normally I just do uh, the whole thing as one. But being that I messed up, I'm going to do a medley today. So we're going to do it the same way. And the purple potato, it doesn't have any sweetness to it. It pretty much tastes like a regular potato, just with a little bit more of a flavor profile to it. The Asian potato is a little sweeter. It's not as sweet as sweet potatoes, but it does have a sweetness component to it. You can still make it savory, which we are going to do today. Right. But uh, yeah, that's the case. I meant to go with all purple, but we'll make it work. You know, sometimes you just got to do what it do. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is pour a little bit of water in here in my potatoes. All right. Get that little bit of water compound going. We cover it up to get some steam going on that while we continue to dice. And um, with the cooking videos, like I said, again, I want to keep this a space where people can share information. But let's just please be respectful, not of just the food, right? But of my wife <laughs> and even beyond. Yeah, this, this is your time to come on. Even beyond my wife, let's have respect for people's, but especially women's choice and how they choose to dress, what they choose to do with their body. Because y'all always telling men, don't tell us what to do with our body, but then women will go ahead and do the exact same thing and judge. My wife is fine AF, right? She worked very hard to have this body. Um, you lost, what, 63 pounds or something like that over the past couple of years. So you want to voice your opinion on the comments that's been coming in on how you dress? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think it's very interesting when you have someone who teaches the types of things that I teach and, you know, the type of people that I help in the process of healing and spirituality for people to only hone in on what I'm wearing mm -hmm. as opposed to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and. It's unfortunate because it does come from women. And obviously when that happens, it's a lot of insecurity right, present. Right. And instead of just <laughs> acknowledging that you're insecure or seeing someone who is um, confident and comfortable in their body, uh, people choose to project their insecurities on the other person and tell them exactly. to cover up. Exactly. And so a large part of psychology is when a person acknowledges something within another person that makes them feel uncomfortable or something they think they don't like, there is an aspect to a wound that is asking them to acknowledge. And so one of the things that I told one of the ladies who commented on my body Come on, is maybe you aren't uncomfortable with my body so much as maybe this is your spirit asking you to spend more time with your body, to nurture your body more, to love your body more, and maybe to show and um, have more of a reverence for your body as opposed to shutting down another person. So to everybody who want to comment on my body, you know, the clothes ain't going to change. I just spent a long time Gosh. working on my body, working on my self-love. There was a time where I never you, even looked at myself in the mirror. She didn't even have a full-length mirror. Right. For four years, I never looked myself in the mirror. So to now feel confident and comfortable enough to just be in my skin, nobody will ever be allowed to take that away from me. Thank you, baby. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I'm good with it. I'm her husband. So if I'm good, she good. No, that's right. Save your breath, save your energy. All right, so what I just did was I went in with some vegan bouillon into my water to already build the flavor profile before my potatoes even go in. 
right? Better than Bouillon. Vegan Bouillon. Yeah, better than Bouillon. Um, this brand actually does have non-vegan um, products, so make sure you read the label because they have the chicken, they got the beef, but they also make one of the best vegan Bouillons. High sodium content, so you want to be easy with how much of it you use. But with something like potatoes, a lot of this is going to get absorbed anyway by the potatoes. So you're not going to get all the sodium um, from that dollop I just threw in. I didn't do much. Did it, there go that word again, dollop. I don't know what it is about dollop that throws me off. But I literally went in with about, I'll show you. I did about this much. I did about that much, y'all. I know people have been asking us about quantities. I'm going to do a little bit better with showing y'all. Okay, so not much. And that's gonna add a, a flavor profile that will start to kind of cook in as the potatoes cook down. Now mind you, in a few, I'm gonna throw in some actual shallots. Shout out to everybody that's been switching over to the shallots. I will be throwing that in. And as you can see, my cast iron is already emitting some smoke. You wanna have that cast iron piping hot before your mushrooms go in. Um, these type of mushrooms cook in a very unique way. So they don't take much, they don't take long. You can hear the water kind of popping off. I'm just making sure everything is coated on my potatoes, right? Mix that around. But you wanna make sure the cast iron is hot because these cook differently than normal potatoes, okay? So these are the blue oysters. You see how beautiful they look. This isn't a huge quantity. Sometimes I may need this with, uh, I also have king um, trumpet mushrooms that I mix in, but just for the sake of the video, we go stem side down. You already hear the sizzle, stem side down as best as we can. Also shout out to Wicked Kitchen. A lot of this stuff, just like y'all watching our videos, I watched a lot of videos. Um, so it's a lot of other channels that I still support. I saw somebody in the comment section, before I say that, we wanna put weight on our mushrooms, right? So I have another cast iron that I'm gonna squeeze down. I'm gonna take my Dutch oven top so I keep my hands safe. And now I just start to squeeze down. You hear the sizzle, right? We're doing that to get the water content to start to come out of the mushroom. You can't be a foodie by just eating food. You gotta understand what you're eating and how it's corresponding to your body, okay? So we're gonna check these out real quick, see how they looking. All right, so we already got some flatness. Okay, you can check that out. And now I'm gonna flip. And again, we're gonna flip these a few times. I already got some of that, ooh, look at that, already. Already got some of that caramelization. It's gonna get way more caramelized in a second, but you wanna flip more than not because sometimes these can get stuck to the pan. You may not even know it. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more salt because you wanna salt both sides, okay? And then we do it again. Okay. Squeeze back down. Let the magic happen. Okay. And right now I'm cutting up a little bit of garlic to go into my potatoes. I'm not going to put it in yet because, of course, garlic can burn, especially black garlic. Also, some things with uh, purple potatoes, high in vitamin C, selenium, um, car carotenoid compounds. They can imp improve blood pressure. I'm somebody who struggled with blood pressure at an early age in my life, 23 years old. That's kind of when my journey for food or with food started because my blood pressure at 23 years old was at 17% uh, functionality. I was supposed to be on dialysis. I was supposed to need a transplant. I went blind in my left eyes a few years later as a result. So a lot of this journey for me started because I say people learn one of two ways, inspiration, desperation. I was desperate to start to dig for that information. Don't wait till it gets that point. Have a certain level of childlike curiosity when it comes to food, right? Um, and then with asparagus, asparagus can help with weight loss. Uh, it improves, it can help prevent UTIs for the ladies, right? It's full of antioxidants, vitamin E, which is great for the skin, um, great for reproductive health, gut health, rich in folic acid, and full of vitamin K. Right, so I know when it comes to greens, a lot of people just lean towards the broccolis and stuff like that, um, because that's what we grew up on. Sometimes you wanna step it up, get a little fancy. And for my fellas, you got a, you got a new little baddie coming over. You wanna impress her, pull out the asparagus instead of the broccoli. She's seeing broccoli every day of her life. I'm gonna show you how to make this real sexy, okay? So with asparagus, 
You don't put the stem in. All you do is you look for the point where it's kind of ready to break. That's not a good example. That may already be broken, right? It'll just snap. So we're gonna go down the line and snap these off. And yes, I'm gonna do all of these because again, all of this is clean, so it may look like a lot when I plate, but when I go to eat it, being that I usually only eat one meal a day, it's not as much as it looks, right? And you'll know, as soon as you bend, it kind of snaps for you. Now I'm gonna start to go in with some seasoning. I'll get back to the rest of the asparagus in a second. I'm gonna go in with some seasoning with my purple potatoes as they cook down. And just like people talked about, first thing I'm going with is my turmeric. Turmeric, depends on the person. I think turmeric is the, the right way, but I like saying turmeric. I low-key like saying lacinto. But I'm gonna honor y'all, I'm gonna say La Senado, but when it's just us, I'm gonna say, yeah, baby, can you give me some lacinto, Kev? Now, just like we spoke about before, we gotta activate our turmeric <laughs> with some black pepper, so that's gonna be my first layers of seasoning. It's already smelling like something. Okay. And I will also go in with some of my fresh herbs. Okay. So I'm going to throw in a whole stalk, small stalk, but I'm going to throw in a whole stalk of the good old thyme. Get some of those aromatics going. And I'm going to just let that cook down. Cover it up. Bang, bang. Yup. And I think that's going to work out. I've never done these two together, but I think that's going to be a nice uh, combination of flavors. Okay, so now we flattened out. I definitely use the right amount of oil because I don't need to add any, and a lot of that is going to get cooked out anyway. So now we can actually start to season this up. So same thing for some color, and then this is also good for the blood. I'm going to go in with some turmeric. <laughs> I'm going to go in with some black pepper as well. And you kind of just treat this like a steak. I know some people say with steak, you only want to do uh, salt and pepper, that's it. I was never like that when I did used to eat steak. I always did multiple flavors. Today, I'm going to go in with some of this uh, So Savory. Shout out to Everything V, V the Goddess. People was asking for her Instagram. I didn't mention it in uh, the description. For those who are looking for ingredients, I always put the ingredients at the bottom of the description. But for those who may not have been able to find her, I will add it to the description today. So this is my first time using the So Savory. This has a little bit more of a salt content than the other one that we use, but we need that for this steak. Nothing too crazy. All right, of course, we are going with our 24 herbs and spices. Some of that going. All right. I think that's all I got of that. I gotta buy some more, but that's okay because we got our other Savior, right? Our all purpose, salt free. Okay, going with some of that. And these seasonings are gonna have a nice caramelization as they start to work themselves in. I'm not gonna do time. I think that's it for right now. I'm gonna let that cook back down. And at this point, it's to the flatness that I kind of want, so I'm only gonna do a few minutes on that side as that cooks. My potatoes are going. And again, I know YouTube can be sticklers for certain things, so they're like, don't touch your face. I'm pretty clean, y'all. Like, you, you would be surprised. You, you could eat off me. <laughs> right? Uh, somebody in this room can attest to that. So I do pretty okay with uh, sanitariness, if that's a word. So again, y'all don't got to fill the comment section with don't touch your face and all this other stuff. I'm okay, y'all. And I'm the only one eating this. Also, somebody said in the comment section, um, She's, I know I was doing damage to that spoon. I will admit, I'm not going front on that. Um, I may have made some of y'all comfortable. My ladies, if it may have been a while, I get it. Um, but somebody in the comment section was like, how could you let your saliva touch the same spoon that's going to touch your food? I'm like, man, you do realize every bite of food you have ever taken, saliva is involved, right? So let's just have some common sense, y'all. Like, it's not that deep. I'm not serving you this food. We're going to be okay. All right. And while I'm doing this, I also wanted to talk to y'all a little bit more about the spirituality of how we take in food. I'm not sure if you guys know this yet or have done your due diligence. I'm a meditation teacher. 
Um, I'm a relationship counselor. I'm a mind hacker. I work a lot with um, the spirit body. So one of the things I learned very early on that allowed me to just listen to what my body was saying about what I was eating better. Oh, let me just pause. Do this for a second. Never want to overcook. Now we got to use this guy. Okay. So now we're going to flip. If you want to come check this out, you can. Okay. And now we're going to see that was starting to stick slightly. Just slightly. Now we're going to season this side. I'll put that face down because all that seasoning is on there. And then we go on with our same seasonings. Like I said, I don't have much more of that. No waste. We're going some of that so savory. Smell good, don't it? Super good. Heaven must be like this. Okay. Um, some of that turmeric. I don't know how y'all be saying turmeric. I'm gonna say turmeric. We hood over here, y'all. It is what it is. Y'all got to deal with it. Some of this guy. Okay. Uh, some black pepper on this side, not too much, because I use the actual peppercorns. Um, you always want to get things in their natural state as much as possible. So, of course, like we talked about the food dying, um, you get to the point where you get things that are so processed, it's lost a lot of its vitality. So that's why I always take that approach. I am going to go in with a little bit of coconut aminos just for some extra lubri lubrication and flavor. And this will probably be my last um, pressure that I'm gonna add to this. And then from this point, I'm gonna just season and cook. But like I was saying with the spirituality, um, one of the first things that allowed me to start to hear my body better, because we'll eat things and we eat so much. There's this, a study where it says the average American is walking around with the equivalent of nine undigested meals in our stomach, right? That can translate to almost 25 pounds of fecal matter. That's just impacted in your gut. And this will express itself in a lot of different ways and a lot of different diseases that you may not think have to do with what's in your stomach. That's why in Asian culture and their medicine, one of the first things they do is when you say something is wrong, they're gonna take a stool. They're gonna examine your stool and see what's going on, right? So you get to the point where you start to register, damn, I ate those Doritos and I broke out, right? Or I put seasoning garlic, regular garlic. I, I added so much garlic, I started to get heartburn and things of these nature. You start to be able to actually hear what your body is saying. One of the techniques that started me on that journey was something that we call yoga of eating. And I'm explain that in a second as I work more on my potatoes. All right, so now those are getting some moisture to it. I'm going to go in with a little bit more flavoring. And now I'm going to go in with my onions, right? Well, excuse me, my shallots. Not too much because I'm going to also use green onions once it gets to that point. And you see the caramelization happening. There's no oil in here. All I use is water and it's still cooking the same way. Somebody literally just posted a video today and they couldn't believe they was actually able to cook their food without oil. So shout out to y'all that's trusting me on that. And you can see for yourself, that's already looking like something, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna go in with a dab of salt, nothing crazy. And I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of the coconut aminos. Nothing too crazy, okay? And baby, no, I'm gonna use that for later. Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking for. I'm also going with some of this low sodium garlic and herb from Everything V because I want my potatoes to have somewhat of a garlicky flavor, just not too crazy. And this is where I can go in with my actual black garlic. Matter of fact, I'm gonna wait. Wait a few more minutes for that because I really want them to hold their components flavor wise, but I will add a dash more water to that. And let that cook down. You just wanna add enough water to kind of coat the bottom of the pan or pot, whatever you got going. And as it's steaming up, in a few minutes, we're gonna just start to crush those potatoes down. We're gonna go in with our almond milk. And that's gonna start to give it that consistency, right? Okay. So I'm gonna get that flavor off of there. And now we can really concentrate on just flavoring our steak. Okay, I'm gonna flip it again. I'm doing a good job with these not sticking because these can very easily stick. Look at the caramelization. 
I should be done with this. Put this over here for now. Okay. I'm going to go in with one more layer of flavor. That's the thing. You got to flavor these very good. Let me see what we looking like. I'm not off, y'all. Mm. Flavor already popping. Actually, I don't need no more flavor. I'm glad I tasted it. All right, so I'm going to work on my potatoes. But yeah, the, the yoga of eating, like I was saying, is a Taoist technique from the Taoist tradition. You may have seen that word before. It's pronounced T-A-O. Very ancient, very famous at this point, sect of yoga and spirit sciences. And the yoga of eating, which will help you to be able to listen to your body, is a few different steps. First thing you do to allow the information from the food to start to spill in. First thing you do, like if I had a plate in front of me right now, I would, and I always do this, it's part of my prayer. I smell the food. Reason being is that the digest digestive enzymes will start to spill towards or into your stomach. That acid will spill in based on the type of food the brain knows is about to come into the system. So when you take that big whiff of whatever it smells like in, you'll feel the saliva starting to trickle down. And with that saliva, in come the digestive enzymes. If you skip that step and go straight to eating, you don't have all the digestive power um, that you can have available when you take that first bite. So really the first stage of digestion beyond what you see is really what you smell, okay? The second step is when you do start to consume your food, you chew thoroughly. This is a huge reason why so many people got digestive issues in those nine undigested meals. It's because we watching something, we on the road, we doing other things as we eat, and we don't realize the food is not being broken down. With how our system is built, well, how our teeth are built, we're not really carnivores. The thing that makes us carnivores is the dry vegetables, the herbs, the seasonings. If you feel like you're a carnivore, go take a bite out of a goat right now. It ain't going to work out too good for you. So to a large degree, our teeth are made for pureeing the food. If you, the, what you're chewing is getting to the point where it's going down in chunks, that's not good enough. So when Mom Dukes told you, boy, you need to chew your food thoroughly, we're talking about at least 25 or more bites to everything you chew. And if you eat your meat, probably more than that. You want to get your, your food to start to liquefy before it starts to enter the stream. Um, so, yeah, making sure you chew thoroughly. Another thing with yoga of eating, and this will help you to lose weight because you'll realize how much less food you actually need. Stop eating, and I know this is a big one because y'all about to be at the Thanksgiving table and y'all gonna overdo it. I know my father used to unbutton his pants before he even sat down because he knew what time it was. You wanna stop eating when you're 70% full. I know that sounds like sacrilege, but the reason being is because it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the signals to come from your body to your brain that we are full. Most of us eat straight through that 15 minute process and before you know it, we have overeaten, and then we got what my people call the itis, right? And you lazy, you uncomfortable, and you literally are like my wife says. What you be saying? That we kind of drunk? Yeah, so what happens when you eat food past what your body is asking you to eat? You get the itis, everybody gets excited about doing that, but what happens is your body is so overwhelmed from the food that you ate, it literally has to knock you out so it can process the food and the energy from the food in the body. So having the itis, having your body have to go through exerting that, many, that much level of energy um, just so it can process your food is not a healthy thing. We want to keep our body in a place of ease and flow, and we don't want our body to ever have to knock us out and put us to sleep just right. so it can work properly. Facts. Y'all remember that word back in science class, homeostasis. You want your, your body to be in balance. So when I did start to do this, and I would say, you know what? Sometimes I wouldn't finish my plate, and I'm big on finishing my food. Um, but I had to go through that process of realizing how much my body wanted. I also lost about 50 some odd pounds over the years from doing this. Now I'm going with my garlic, y'all. Not too crazy. A little bit of black garlic. So I made it in the, in the steak. I'm going to mix that in. And now I'm going with my almond milk in a few seconds. I'm going with some nutritional yeast. Okay. 
liberal with that. I also do some with my steak and we about to make our sauce in a second. I'm gonna flip that over so it gets both sides. Okay, look even more caramelization, All right? I turn the burner down to about halfway on my steak so I can talk my way through this, right? So just always be cognizant that you start super hot with these, but over time, as they start to cook more, you can turn down, okay? But yeah, once I realized how much my body actually needed or didn't need, then it got to the point where I knew how much to actually put on my plate. I knew how the quantity should be as far as you know, I'm not going to put as much potatoes as asparagus because that's heavier, that's starch. Um, I usually will have more steak than this, but for the sake of this video, that's what we got. I will usually have about three more patties and that would be my meal. So a very small quotient of the potatoes, healthy quotient of asparagus, healthy quotient of the steak. And I started to realize even when I was eating the meat, the meat became the smallest part of my plate. And I got to the point where I would wait that 10, 15 minutes. Most times I wouldn't go back. I wouldn't go back to finish it because I realized like, you know what, I'm full and then I would package it up, right? So the yoga of eating is integral for listening to your body, but also to lose weight because you get to the point where your body goes back into homeostasis and you learn what it's actually asking for. A lot of our hunger is not real hunger. A lot of it is suggestive. We smell things when we're driving on the highway. We see other people. You watch commercials, stuff like that. And before you know it, you think, I'm hungry. And it's really more so your thoughts and your emotions that are asking for attention and energy in some way, shape, or form. So y'all could take that. That's a freebie. I got a million more for you if you ever want to work with me as a client. As far as counseling, mind hacking, I'm an emotional uh, translator. My wife is an emotional alchemist. You want to talk to them about what we mean when we say that? Yeah, so emotional translator, emotional alchemy. It just means that every person has their natural bandwidth of emotion in their bodies that they experience naturally through life. However, whenever you experience those emotional energies, you have to have the capacity or the ability to transmute those emotions, to work with those emotions, to release those emotions. And if you do not, what happens is those emotions get stored in the body, mm -hmm. they get stored in the liver, in the spleen, in the kidneys, in the heart, all of the areas in the body. Um, and so what happens is you need to have a productive way to get rid of that emotional energy. If you do not, this is the cause of cancer, disease, right. infertility, any aspect of the body that you perceive as an illness, it comes from emotional trauma. And so um, our job is to help people release that emotional trauma, teach them tools on how to heal from their emotional trauma and their right. emotional wounds. Facts. So well, what I'm doing right now, and we can show them how this is coming together. So we got a uh, uh, potato medley that's starting to, you know, get that liquid going starting to look like mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna mash these up enough to still have some level of the structural fortitude of the potato. I want it chunky, but it's still gonna be creamy at the same time. And you can see at this point, it's definitely starting to get there. I'm actually gonna go ahead and go in with my scallions, right, or green onions. Give it that pop of flavor as well, okay? Mix that right in. I'm gonna actually go in with a little bit more almond milk and then I'm gonna turn this down and let it simmer. And we almost done, y'all. When I sh show you how fast these asparagus get cooked, you're gonna realize that this meal does not even take as long, of course, as we're going right now, because I'm actually showing it to you, okay? Mm-hmm. Just turn your head if you don't like that. Okay, show them this too. I went in with, and what is so this is barbecue sauce. I told y'all about the brand Fadi or Foodie, I don't know how you say it. And they specialize in easily digestible sauces, sauces, dressings. A lot of their stuff has no onions, no garlic, gluten-free, um, paleo-free as well. And like I said, you have brands that are starting to come out that understand this. So there's a base of this barbecue sauce. It's not as sweet as I need it to be. I went in with a dollop of ketchup and some date syrup, right? I'm also going with a little bit of cinnamon, a dash of cinnamon, nothing crazy. Okay, that was a little crazy, but I'll be all right. I just add a little bit more barbecue sauce, a little bit of mustard seed, nothing crazy. 
I'm going to go in with a little bit of dry thyme because it's going to be hard for the fresh thyme to stick to this. So this is another layer of flavor, all right? A little bit more barbecue sauce. And if I don't use all of this for the steak, I can use this later, of course. We mix this around. And then we're just going to start the coat. Make sure my flavor is okay. Yep, that's good to go. And I don't have my brush, so I know most of y'all will have a brush at the crib, so I'm just, I'm thugging it, y'all. That's how we do. I'm going to let that cook down, and then I'm going to kind of mix these together, mix them around, and let them absorb all that from the pot, excuse me, from the cast iron. All that flavor down there, you want to work it in. This was a long range I forgot to get in, so if y'all like, what's that white thing? I'm gonna try to cook that down enough to mix it into this meal. All right, I'm gonna go in with the rest of this. And this way you don't gotta stop to do each side. You just make sure everything, get some of that coat in. And these kind of have flaps. So as you do this, this, the flavor, the sauce, the seasoning is also getting into the flaps, All right? Okay. And just to allow the flavor to get in more, I'm gonna cut this down even more and I'm gonna cover it. Now we work on, oh yeah, there we go. We work on our mashed potatoes. We going with a little bit more of the almond milk because I need it a little smoother than this. There are better brands of almond milk, a little healthier. This is what we had at the crib. Now, if you're going with too much almond milk at once, it's gonna be hard to get the consistency right. So you just do a little bit of time and you keep adding as you need to. I'm gonna crush my potatoes down a little bit more. So you don't gotta do the box. I didn't add any butter to this, any oil. It's not necessary. It's got my, my green onions, my seasonings, almond milk, my water. Okay. I may go in with a little bit more almond milk. See how my flavor is first. And then the last thing we'll do is our asparagus. All right. And we also would like suggestions from y'all outside of just, you know, don't touch your face and all of that. Um, what would y'all like to see us make? What would y'all like us to talk about during these videos? And just keep in mind, I just got to continue to shout out our podcast. Has nothing to do with cooking. We do talk about food here and there, but it's more so about the healing, the emotional aspect, the relationship aspect. You know, we represent black love to a lot of people in a lot of different ways and it's real, it's valid. So we do our best to help give those keys in a balanced way. Because in the black podcast era that we in right now, it's a lot of toxicity going on. So we try to represent the balance. So make sure, perfect. Make sure y'all get with us with not just the cooking videos, but I'm sure one of those other podcasts can help your relationship with your kids, your spouse, your finances, we talk about money and all of that because we both work for ourselves um, and have been doing so for my, my wife, how many? Two, three? Yeah, she's about three years in. Um, I'm about six years into this journey, so yeah, man, we got a lot more for you than just food, but we know everybody got to eat, so I get it. I'm going to go in with a little bit more almond milk, and then I'm going to turn this off. Crush it a little bit more. And the more I crush it, the smaller these potatoes get. They absorb more of that flavor. Let me see how my flavor is looking. Mm -hmm. It may not look super sexy, but I'm telling you, it will mimic. There we go. I'm going with more of this guy. Need a little bit more flavor. I can turn off my mushrooms. I'm going go with some more nutritional yeast. If I can find it, there we go. A little bit of that cheesy flavor. Get all these scallions in here. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn this down. Put that on super low. Okay. My steaks are done. And I'm gonna use this same skillet for my asparagus. It's gonna give it a beautiful char because the flavors that's already in there. Going with one more dash of salt. Okay. Now 
You want to tell them what our next video is going to be? I mean, they're here, so they may not realize how much they need it. And you want to give them the story about how it came together? Just a little preview. Yeah, so I will be making um, chicken noodle soup. And one thing when I was in my process of healing, I always said that I couldn't cook. So my healing process as far as my body was a lot more difficult because I didn't have the tools to really cook food. And then when my husband came along, his thing was, you just don't know how to cook yet. Exactly. And so when I adopted that ideology and he started to teach me things, um, actually, you didn't even teach me this. I was sick. Right. I was at your apartment when he still lived in New Jersey and I lived in Houston. I was there and I had a fever of like 103. Yep. And he nursed me back to health. <laughs> and one of the things that he made me was chicken noodle soup and it was fire. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to figure out how to make this cause this is crazy. I'm, I hadn't ha had that type of chicken noodle soup since I was younger, but now my taste palate had evolved and this was the exact flavor that I wanted. And the chicken was mushrooms. And the chicken was mushrooms, yeah, it was mushrooms. So that was my first time having vegan chicken noodle soup. But when I got home and my idea was I wanted to recreate it, it took me some time to perfect uh, how I wanted to recreate it for myself. He walked me through the steps, walked me through what I needed. If you look at my Instagram account, you can actually see the first day I ever made chicken noodle soup. I posted all of the videos on my Instagram account. So now that I've perfected it, it's just so good. It tastes like nostalgia. And um, it's something that you can always go to. You can feel good about it. You can feel guilt-free about it. Especially if you're someone who's attempting to try to lose weight, but you still want to have a beautiful flavor of food, the chicken noodle soup is it. Uh, a matter of fact, before you do so, I'm going in with a little sage. Sage just brightens up this flavor, right? I'm gonna just mix it in and I'm just gonna leave it in there. This is done, I've already turned the burner off. Sage does wonders for the, this type of flavor profile. You don't even gotta break it up, you just go in with it and I will probably pull it out at a certain point. I'm gonna just let those flavors marry. I'm gonna get all of this off the sides because again, we don't waste. And I think my flavor, my flavor is there. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna throw this to the side. Okay. I'm gonna put my mushrooms to the side. Those are done. Now you may be somebody that's like super saucy. You want more sauce. I'm good with just that. I just want the flavor of the sauce. And like I said, that's not a huge amount, but this is more so for y'all. So with this same pot, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of water. All right? Let that kind of pull off everything flavor-wise that's on the bottom of that pot. Excuse me, cast iron. And I'm gonna go in with my asparagus. And that's gonna already start to absorb some of that flavor that's there. All right? Oops, excuse me, sir. Okay, now I know it looked like way more before we cut the stems off, but now you see this fits in the pot. And the only thing I'm gonna do for right now, and this cooks in like five minutes or less, so you're gonna see. You're already starting to see some of that char from the, uh, the actual cast iron. We make sure everybody fits. Okay. And I'm gonna cover this guy up. I'm gonna let him steam for a few. Hmm. Oops, now nah, you get in there too. Also my garlics. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, come back. And I want you to give one more detail as a preview for chicken noodle soup, which we about to make right after I'm done with this. When you first made it, what was the difference in then as opposed to how refined you've gotten in making it now? Oh man, <laughs> I was using so many unnecessary ingredients in when I first made it. Um, and then also, I didn't know what was necessary for my body and what my body could break down and what it couldn't break down. And so I think a huge part is having the capacity to know what my body is asking for versus what is not. And so garlic, it wasn't asking for garlic. And I recognized that I was extremely bloated and I felt like um, 
I felt a sensation like right here in my stomach. Mm. And that's when you were saying, well, you know, the fermentation, how garlic is at least acidic. Right. And so I just started to take things out of my soup slowly because I had everybody and their mama in my soup. <laughs> I had potatoes in there. I had um, the noodles in there. I had corn. I Anything you could think of, whatever was going to make me feel like it was nostalgic. Low key, I was making stew. Mm, yeah, right. I was making stew. I'm and sure make that one day too. Yeah, so now I don't even use um, broth. Right. I use water. Right. And it's just perfect. Right. So it's just realizing what's necessary, what your body wants, and what it doesn't want. All right, look, look at how beautiful and bright this flavor is. I haven't gone in with any other seasonings besides what was already in this cast iron. I am going to use a little bit of vegan butter. Um, everybody usually goes to Earth Balance. We get the soy free one. There are much better butters. I will show y'all one at a certain point, but for um, the sake of this video, we're going to use just a little bit of this. Right? As a matter of fact, before the butter goes in, I'm going to go in with the garlic. Excuse me, the garlic and herb. Just a little bit. I already got black garlic in here. Okay. I'm going to go in with a little bit of salt. Nothing crazy. I'm going to go in with that all-purpose. That saves our life. The cap almost came off. I would have been done up. All right. And that good old pepper. And then this is where the magic happens. We go in with nothing crazy. That amount of butter right in the middle. My nutritional yeast. Man, that smells good. All right. And then... We do one of these numbers, let everything get coated, let that butter make it to the bottom of the skillet. I'm telling you, bro, if you got, a, you got a new little thing thing over, and you start whipping that asparagus like this, <laughs> it may go down. <laughs> She's going to be like, oh, he know how to cook. And that's when you put her on to, you know, Buddha's love. Like, nah, you know, I just be watching my boy Doc. He be getting it in, right? And then I'm going to cover it one more time. Oops, almost forgot. Hit it with the splash of the lemon juice. Right? Bang, bang. And literally another one or two minutes, that's going to be done. I'm going to cover that, let those flavors marry. Okay? And we pretty much done. So I'm going to move some of this stuff around. We're going to plate up and show y'all how it's looking. And we'll do a little taste test, All right? Am I missing anything? Also, baby, baby. Also, y'all, y'all not baby, that's baby. Um, pre and probiotics is something that we live by. Um, so whether that's kombucha, whether that's yogurt, even if you're somebody that still eats dairy and things of those nature, we pretty much do at least, well, I pretty much do at least one kombucha a day. Um, we also don't take in as much water as we used to. We do coconut water, things that's gonna like really flush our system. Because when you start to realize how little food you need, at this point, my regimen is dictated by me being empty. I don't feel comfortable eating more food, even if it feels like I'm hungry. A lot of times that, that sensation is digestion actually happening and we mistake it as hunger. So I'm to the point where I don't feel comfortable really eating a meal until I've emptied out. And at this point, like you've done intense fast, correct? The more you fast, it seems like the more is coming out. And it's like, oh, I'm not even eating anything. Where is this all, all is coming from? But it's coming from that backed up fecal matter and things of that nature. So you'll get to the point where you'll really be able to respond to what your body is asking for. And you won't overdo it. Let me see how one of these is. I'm going to go with a little more of this guy. Why do you look so good right now? I do? You do. Be nice. We on camera. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this guy. And that's the thing, you season as you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love broccoli and all of that. I really eat it at this point because it's more nutrient dense things like asparagus. Um, 
but it's just something about asparagus once I got to it. Brussels sprouts is something I'm into. Okra, I'm gonna show y'all how to make my famous okra at a certain point. But it's just something about the brightness of asparagus. It almost tastes like chicken for some reason to me. I don't know if I've just been vegan for too long, but. <laughs> All right, let me give one of these a go. How we looking on time? One more dollop, and we good. Um, and now I can turn this off completely. And you can always go crazy with your nutritional when you feel like you need one more pop of flavor. All right. Okay, so as we plate, I'm not going to take them all out right now. I'll just take a few. Boom. And it's still collecting some of that flavor. So I'm going to let that collect. I'm going to go in with some of this guy. That's mashed potatoes, y'all. That's purple mashed potatoes. All right. Just a little dollop, still got some chunkiness to it. Mm -hmm. Oops, okay. And we'll do our taste test. I mean, I already know what's hitting. All right. Yeah, I don't know what y'all missing, man. That's the thing with, when you know how to do this the right way, you're not missing out on any flavors. And I cut one of these. Okay. Oof, man. All right. You know you gotta come get in one of these. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. So, if you don't know anything else to bring for Thanksgiving, bring this. Asparagus, purple potato, mashed potato medley, and your vegan king oyster mushroom steak. Of course, you can make way more than I made, but I'm in the picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm about to go eat. I'm about to go be, be nasty and let my saliva mix with my food. Y'all can go ahead and judge me. Leave it in the comments. Suggestions, make sure y'all like, subscribe, uh, share, consume my podcast. Uh, Sasha Flower Skincare, uh, of course, is available. Remember who the F you are. Yeah, my book. Book also available. I have a discount going to the end of the year for my counseling services, whether, whether that's couples therapy, one-on-one -on -one mind hacking slash life coaching, Familial therapy, working with ages 12 and up. So if you got children, I know how to, you know, work with them as well. Um, and private meditation mentoring. If y'all see this before next week, we got an event right here. Yeah. Um, so we have Bob Night here in Houston. So if you're interested in that, we'll have games, in the child games. Uh, what else? Music. Music, mm -hmm. fun. We Art. have a large community, mm -hmm. so our community be here. If you want to be a part of whatever it is we're doing, just hit us up. And our uh, Mexico retreat next year, 2024, the summer. Yes. You can start paying now, so your payments will be super small. We've been doing that for three years. It's always life-changing, so hit us about, up about that as well. Yep, that's I, it. All right, Buddhist candy, that's a wrap. Y'all holla. <laughs>